Hi, it's Marcus here from 4Pods. One of our customers emailed and said that we spent a lot of time on the 4Pods scan program, but not enough time on the 4Pods touch in terms of training and so on. So uh, this is a video to show you some advanced features of 4Pods touch, uh, features that you might be able to use in your business, features that you didn't know existed, features that would make a difference in your business. All right, so let's start uh, with the basics. Um, First of all, uh, when you set up a, a four-pass touch system, you obviously would want to, uh, for restaurants, I mean, you'd obviously want to set up your system so that it prints to remote printers. Uh, you might say that in my situation, I only have one printer. That's fine. doesn't matter. You can set up one printer in your system, uh, and that one printer can also print the slip as well as printing the orders for the kitchen. So let's take my example here, as you can see on the screen, these are the printers that I've got configured on my computer. And you see I've got a 58 mm printer and a printer that I renamed uh, to KP. Yes, there's a lot of errors because the physical printer is not attached, but that will just give you an example. All right, so let's start off there first of all. Um, so again, you can rename the printer uh, to anything you want to, except that if you want to use it for a kitchen printer or a remote printer for that matter, it, it cannot have uh, spaces in the description. That's just some old rules and purpose that we've had and we're staying in the same way. And that has to do with Windows uh, XP machines and so on, where you could actually share um, the printers on a, a network. In other words, it was a serial printer or it was a, a, a printer connected on your network and you could share it from XP machines and so on. Um, this doesn't apply anymore, but we haven't changed the rules. So the rules are still the same. If you want to print to a remote printer, you want to change it uh, to a printer with no spaces. So if that is a printer that you want to use, you can rename it to anything you want to. Typically, you'll just right click, go to printer properties, and then go and change the name to whatever you want it to be. All right, so I'm going to leave it like this for now. Uh, you might say, but okay, but hang on, how is it still going to print my slips? Well, it will still do that in the touchscreen option menu. Control C. If I go too fast in the video, always a uh, good idea to pause it, go back, rewind a little bit, and then go back. So in your receipt printers here, as you can see, uh, receipt printer, I can really specify that I want to print uh, my receipts to the printer called KP. Now you might go and say that, okay, no, I want to print the receipts to that printer over there, which is my uh, receipt printer. Again, you might decide to install the printer twice. The same driver, same port, same everything, but the one is called Slip or 58 more printer, and the other one is called KP. Um, again, your choice. So that is where my receipt is going to print, this configuration part here. Let's just go through it again. So this is your receipt, your bill for the customer, where your cash ups will print, and so on. In my case, now the cash ups I specified must print to the A4, so I'm going to take that off. All right. Then, to set up the items to print in the kitchen, I'm going to go to my back office program. I'm going to click on Stock Create Edit and Main Stock by Detail. Let's take any product. I've been working a lot on pizzas uh, for this video, so let's take that item. And I can say, well, I want to print it in my uh, KP printer. Now, if you're not sure where these printers are configured, you can click on the little dot, with, uh, sorry, the block with three dots. And I can go to my KP and say, okay, fine, the KP printer, uh, the channel itself, the location called KP, must print on the, the printer called KP, um, as well as KP2. In other words, I want to print in two different printers. I have different sections. I have a big kitchen, whatever the case may be. I want uh, the guy that does the pasta to also know that there's a pizza on the way, so he must wait. He mustn't start preparing already because it takes 11, 12 minutes to make the pizza. So that is how you would set up your printer. So in this case now, this item will go to KP. All right. Uh, let's just go out of there. All right. So I'm going to obviously choose it over here. And that's my KP printer. So when I now ring up that Spitzer Large 3 toppings, it will automatically print to that printer. Um, I think that's self-explanatory enough. I don't have to go into more detail with that. Obviously, you can have multiple selections uh, for instance you can have a printer that's dedicated to pizza um, again you can go to the pizza printer over there and say well where does that print well that one only prints in the kp2 printer it doesn't print on kp at all okay again your kp might be the coordinating printer that depends on you uh, 
you know you can have one printer two printers as many as you want so uh, we have a customer that's got nine printers in the kitchen um, in other words he will print the fish to the fish section the meat to the meat section and 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 he's got another printer that he used for coordinating um, these days we have wireless uh, oh, sorry not wireless but land printers that you can configure on your network um, which means that you can print from any computer over the network to that printer um, the normal 4 pos 80 more printer does exactly that better than setting it up as a USB or anything like that because you can access it from multiple machines on your network all right so I think that covers printers uh, you as I said welcome to go back and go and have a check on that all right so the second item on my list is because the same customer asked about what do I do with swaps um, so let's go and have a look well, let's go and have a look first of how I have set it up um, in the touchscreen. In other words, how it will work. And then you can go and decide whether, uh, well, then we'll go through the detail about how did I set it up. Okay, so I'm, I set up some items under the main course. All right, and I'm just going to uh, ring up my large seafood uh, pizza. Okay, it's cost 125 rand or quattro or dollar, whatever the situation is, doesn't matter. And now I want to do some swaps. The customer says, no, I don't want it your way. I want it my way. So I've created an item, a button on the screen. Okay. And this is a normal product with no price. And it will basically say, well, what do you want us to do now? So the customer says, no, I don't want calamari on there, but I want to swap it with prawns. Okay. And you would have decided that in your messaging that calamari and prawns cost roughly the same price. Yes or no. Uh, pointless to get into the argument. And yes, I will allow the customer to swap the calamari for the prawns, okay? And there's no extra charge for that. And then, as you can see now, again, bear in mind, if you don't know, the, the kitchen slip will always print in the sequence that you ring it up. So if I ring up the large seafood pizza, as you can see, this is line one, and then ring up the, the swaps, um, it will then print in that sequence in the kitchen. So the kitchen customer or the kitchen chef will then get a, a slip that says large seafood pizza, no calamari, swap with prawns. Okay, again, you might do the wording different. Also, you need to obviously do some training with your chef. Make sure that he understands what does that make sure mean, what does he need to do with that order. The last thing you want um, is a large seafood pizza coming out with uh, double prawns on there because you'd added extra prawns. Okay. And uh, so let's go and have a look and see how what I did to, to get that going. I'm just going to go exit. Yes, I know it was a cash sale. Uh, let's go and see how I set it up. All right, so in the back office, uh, stock create editor main stock by detail. And let's go and look at our large, uh, sorry, our seafood pizza, large seafood pizza over there. And I'm going to look at my messaging. All right. Oh, in fact, you know, let's rather go and look at the swaps item, the item that I created in the system. Uh, called swap extras okay so if I can look at my me messages I've said that I've got messages here now that uh, that pops up as soon as I hit the button it will pop up a screen that says no calamari no anchovies no squid and depending on which option I ch yeah, the customer chooses it will then automatically pop down to the next message that says swap with uh, prawns calamari or squid in other words the same options but just as a swap name okay so in terms of this you'll see that there's the messages and all i did was allocated it in this case now i've also allocated the swap with as you can see it's in the same line as the swaps so as soon as i hit that button any one of them it will pop down to the next uh, message automatically and that's how you will handle the swaps now you might say yeah but i've got lots okay well yes then you've got to enter lots okay remember that you the whole purpose of these messaging is to communicate with a with a kitchen. It's pointless to go and say swap meat with meat, uh, meaning that swap bacon for bacon or uh, bacon for ham or whatever the case may be. You know, you've got to put it in. You've got to edit a button. Yes, I know it's a lot of work. Okay, that's why it takes a long time to set it up properly. But when it's set up properly, your kitchen will run like a factory. It will just get the orders will come out the orders will be great customers will be happy you'll get paid well and the customers will come back for more so all of these things are critical for you to set up your system correctly and properly um, so spend the time invest the time in the setup 
and once you've done the setup properly you'll see that the business just runs and flows okay um, again I think in terms of swaps uh, that explains it quite easily um, let's go and have a look while we're here now in the back office um, the next question would be all right fine I have a customer option in my system the customer is allowed three toppings okay um, so I have a product in my system let's go and look at that product quickly uh, I think I called it something called three toppings okay so there we go pizza over three toppings and in my messaging I'm asking the three questions in other words what is topping one that you would like to have what is topping two and topping three now again exactly what I said now if you've got 55 different items that could be toppings then you will add all of them in here okay because the customer can choose any of the toppings any ones that you decide okay you might say that no prawns are not allowed so then for therefore you will not have prawn as a topping okay prawn must go with the seafood pizza whatever your rules are in your business you want to make money out of a pizza you definitely don't want to give money away so this is how I set it up so I've got an item that's called pizza large three toppings the customer can choose three toppings in the touch screen this is what it looks like in practice uh, again I put it under my uh, large and I'm gonna say pizza large three toppings so here it ask me now what do you want is topping one well topping one I want bacon on there and I want some pineapple and maybe some ava and those are my three options my three toppings on my my pizza with three toppings and the price obviously is a fixed price um, you might say but hang on you know yes they can choose this but then it must charge extra and it's five rand for this and three rand for that and yes we all know it gets very complicated because in, especially in South Africa uh, customers have this theory that they go into the restaurant they actually turn it into their own kitchen which means that they make their own food in other words they don't like your menu they they think they know better they know the combinations better and they will decide to do it if that is the case um, you can have something like this uh, what we call upsells as well okay so let's ring this up and then I'll go and show you again how how that was done so on a medium pizza uh, I have an upsell item and on my upsell I want to say the customer can choose a cold drink okay now in the one case we have a cold drink included in the price so let's just pick the coke can all right and that's all the customer wants now what happens is you'll see that medium pizza comes in at the normal price of 77 rand okay and the coke can gets rung up so that we can print in the kitchen and we can show on the bill what the order was for because remember now this customer might choose different things so the one medium Hawaiian comes with a coke the next one might come with something else okay so you want the bill to display it exactly that same sequence as well and of course print properly in your kitchen printer so that the person picking it making it whatever else knows that they've got to add a coke into the packaging uh, with the serviettes and everything else that goes along all right so let's take the next pizza same pizza medium Hawaiian pizza but now I want to say no 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 I want to ring up the Fanta can all right and let's go and see what that does okay well that's the same also no price sorry I can't remember which one I did so I think it was on the sprites yes there we go all right so what I did was on my Hawaiian pizza I've got a sprite in other words they have a choice they can pick a sprite uh, you might say but okay uh, they can add a Red Bull for that matter Red Bull we not can't include it in the price we will charge extra for a Red Bull so it's an upsell product so it's a, pre, uh, a, a message that comes up so that the cashier doesn't forget to ask okay that's the main purpose and then the system will then determine is it a no price uh, upsell or uh, extra price upsell exactly like we have here so let's go and have a look at uh, again how this is rung up or set up all right I'm just gonna finish that of course my printers will now go crazy in the kitchen and start printing that bill um, so let's have a look at, at that for instance okay so I have under cold drinks we have these items sprite can and so forth all right um, I just want to double check I think I added another item with a price let me just go and check sorry um, let's just see what else. otherwise I'll just add it oh yes there we've got a, a diet coke which is totally misspelled so let's just fix up the diet coke um, and for our customers please uh, you know 
do a simple spell check, go through. If you're not sure about spelling, you're not good in it, uh, ask somebody else to double check it for you. All right, it's, uh, it's quite embarrassing if a customer uh, gets a bill and uh, the items are misspelled uh, simply because you didn't know better. All right, so there's a Diet Coke can. So let's go back again to my, uh, I think it was a wine pizza. All right, excuse the pink pings at the background. All right, so I'm going to go to my messaging, and there's my my cold drinks that I have over there. And I want to add my, my Diet Coke. But because I want to control the stock of that Diet Coke, or the cold drinks for that matter, I'm not just saying a new child, okay? I am saying new child from existing stock, okay? So if I click on there, and I go down to, and I double click on my Diet Coke can, it will then show me the price, uh, this price is wrong, we're busy fixing this, um, but it will show you the normal selling price of the item, all right? And then, very important, it will say, do I charge for this or do I not charge? That is what the zero price and the Sprite can for the extra 18 Rand was all about earlier. Okay, so if you say charge on sale, it means add, another, add the amount or add the price of the Diet Coke can onto the system. All right, so let's go. I said, now yes, it, it's a Diet Coke can, and I'm going to click exit. So it tells me it's been done. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Be deallocated quickly, and then just allocate it one more time. Then it will display properly. All right. Let's go and do an update point of sale quickly. Yeah, I know I use the word quickly often. Uh, sometimes not so quickly, but on my computer, it is quite quickly. All right, so my data instruction number, of course, remember that the domain controller has to stay open. You see we've got instruction 201. Uh, it's just updated there in the background. I minimize, and now I can go and do another sale. I can go back to my main courses, my medium, and my Diet Coke can then automatically appears over there. I can click on that and accept, and remember now that we said that it must add for that. So it's 77 Rand for the pizza and 12 Rand extra for the Coke. All right. Okay, so let's go through a couple of other things that's also important. Um, it's quite a quick video, this one, so I think we've got time to add a couple of other options. Um, in many cases, you don't want the system to prompt and stop and say, well, do you want to print yes or no, or whatever the case may be. Um, if you set up your system under point-of-sale parameters to say, print past transactions, it must print yes, or set to yes. It will not prompt you. It will just automatically print a bill for the customer as you go. Especially now it's in takeaways. Uh, when you cash up a table, it automatically prints the bill. Of course, if you're VAT registered, you'll type in your VAT number. You'll, uh, or if you're not registered, you'll take it out. Make sure your VAT is set to zero. Yes, the videos and the steps are there for that. Okay. So that's one of the important things. Again, I'm going to just do an update because any changes we do in the back office, we want that's those changes to go through to the point of sale. Bear in mind that these are all, uh, this demo is built on version 18.5 and later, which is obviously a new SQL version. So if there are anything that you say, but it's not working on my system, go make sure. Uh, today, which is the 7th of May 2018, we'll release 18.5.2, uh, simply because we've added some more functionalities and there's also this item or this, uh, okay. Um, all right, so let's go and just double check those changes that we did now. So if I take arguments like that uh, table over there and I say cash out table, excuse me, I don't have to click on print. If I want to print the bill beforehand, in other words, I want to give the customer a performer invoice, the same as what is appears on the screen, I will click print. If I do not want to do that, I just want to finalize the bill, you'll see it automatically prints and it will go through. Mine obviously gives me an error, but uh, that's the case maybe. All right, so another option under option menu, control C, uh, that makes it a lot faster in terms of uh, selling on the system. Let's do one at, one at a time, is don't ask for confirmation. So let's go and see what that looks like. I'm gonna do a cash sale. I'm gonna ring up arguments like, uh, yeah, of course the item that I ring up is not there. All right, so let's just do a large seafood pizza. That's all the customer wants, cash out table, 200 Rand. Have a nice day, and you can see no prompts, no do you want to commit, any of that. It's just fast and quick, and immediately you're ready for the next customer. Um, so that is what that option is about, very important. 
in a fast food environment. All right, so let's look at something else. Another option here, uh, we say they on credit card sales automatically add the change to gratuity. Um, let's say again in restaurant environment, uh, it creates some problems, so be careful of that. I'm just going to say add a table argument, say like table two, two people at the table, doesn't matter. And I'm going to go ring up my famous seafood pizza and finish. Okay, so there's my table and I want to go and cash out that table now. I could have obviously gone straight, but let's do it. Let's do it this way. And I'm going to say now the customer gives me 150 Rand. Okay. And as soon as I do that, the system will automatically have added that 25 Rand difference as the tip. I didn't need to go and enter it in. The problem with that concept is that if the cashier or the waiter then adds the wrong amount or types in the wrong amount, let's say they put in 200 Rand, okay, your cash ups at the end of the day for this waiter will say they've earned uh, 75 Rand's worth of tips or gratuity then. But the credit card only went through 450. Now it creates a problem. Okay. So it's all nice if you say, well, my, my cashiers, my waiters are perfect. But as we all know, they're not perfect. So in many cases, that creates bigger, a bigger problem. For, for me personally, over all the years, and uh, I think I must have done about three, 4,000 restaurants in my time, uh, over those three, 4,000 restaurants, the first day is always the nightmare because all the waiters say the figures are wrong. Okay? And the reason why they say that is because they obviously want to make more money. So it's a lot simpler always um, to go into the back office, argument say go to the day load reports um, for your waiters on, a, on the first day and, and basically go and print out a post transaction report for the waiters. Okay, so they can go and see uh, which bills they had. And normally when you show them the bills, they say, oh yes, I remember that one. All right. So they can remember that's table number two that I had. Yes, that's the one in the corner. Yes, they had a bottle of wine or whatever the case may be. Um, and if obviously if you've got different waiters, you'll be able to print this out uh, per person or per uh, uh, person over here. You'll have John and Peter and Chris and Sonny and whoever else works for you names. And then you'll print out a post transaction report for them so that you remind them which tables they had and what orders they had. I mean, if it's still a confusion uh, on that, and they say, but I never rang that up, okay? Then you can go back to the kitchen and actually go and get the slips from them. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what we are saying is that, Mr. Waiter, you are my representative. You have rang up the items. You have received the food from the kitchen, okay? Therefore, we take the responsibility to you. If your customer walked out because you didn't take care of the customer, sorry, sir, or la matey, lady, that is your problem. We just want the money for the items that went out of our kitchen. We've handled, don't ask for confirmation, we've handled. Okay, and the last one in the touch screen, which is also good in some cases. The system by default, uh, if a manager logs in, um, maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Okay, so let's, let's look at that. If a manager logs into your system, in this case now, I'm a manager. I can click on Waitron and it will show me all tables. doesn't matter who opened up the tables, as you can see. Okay? If I click on Waitron again, it will only show the person that logged into the system. So let's just do that as an example. I'm logging in as that 4 pass uh, waiter for that matter. And as you can see, the 4 pass table sits over there. Now, if I then look at all my tables over there, as a manager owner, if you click on a table and you finalize it, now bear in mind, I'm logged in now as four pods, okay? Uh, or manager or John or whatever the manager's name is. And I take that table and I cash it off. What will happen is that that money will be on my name. In other words, I'm the one who received the money. Therefore, I will be responsible to, uh, to cash it up, declare it, etc., etc. Um, so if you're out on your cash ups and stuff, and the system obviously will prompt you and and make sure that everybody that has finalized the sale uh, has done the cash ups. Okay, uh, so let's do that quickly and so you can just see the practicality. All right, so if I go to option menu, waiter on cash up, you can see that everybody that worked on the system. And if they're still open table, sorry, you can't finalize. Okay, um, all right, so what this option is about, that's a great system uh, in places like Mozambique, for instance. In Mozambique, um, the waiters will ring up the bills. They are not allowed to finalize a bill. In other words, in the permissions, uh, again, let me spend some time on that. Um, so let's go back to the back office. 
uh, store setup and security maintain employee details and let's say that is the waiter that you're looking for maintain point of sale parameters in this case this person has everything up uh, while well, they definitely won't have access to that but more specifically so there's a cash out table they can't cash up a table so in Mozambique the waiters are not allowed to cash up their own tables the manager or cashier or central cashier um, would handle that so they will ring up all the bills open and close tables as they go along for the day once they've gone and finished the transaction uh, this waitress uh, could even print the bill take to, to the table collect the money come back to the cashier um, and present the money and the cashier will finalize the table in other words the cashier is the only person that's responsible for the cash again the simple rule applies if uh, the waiter did not get the money from the table that the waiter is responsible you might even say that no i do not allow my uh, waitress to actually print the bill okay in other words you uh, and especially not reprint the bill reprint the bill is another option in the system that sort of like flies by the side but critical because we do not want uh, a waiter uh, waitress then for that matter to be able to reprint the same bill over and over again especially in coffee shops you find that they ring up one cappuccino and they just reprint that bill the whole day a typical cappuccino will be a small amount of money people won't put it through on the credit cards and they'll just pay cash and all of that money will just go in their pocket because all they're doing is reprinting the same bill um, and pocketing the money and in the meantime you don't make money and you don't know why well that's why okay well definitely one of the reasons why okay so um, in terms of the cashier coming back to the money uh, so what we have is a, in the system so that is the way that we will be able to control whether the waitress can or not finalize the table another option uh, that I just thought of now which is quite nice is um, in the back office we we have a, under our parameters we have an option that says um, they must finalize the sale now this comes back from a group of franchise well a franchise group that we did some years ago um, and we found that at the end of the day there was lots of open tables okay so we've added an option in here that says cash sales have to be finalized this is again typical takeaway environment and if you've got that option available it does not allow you on a cash sale to just click on exit or finalize uh, in other words it forces you to put in the amount of money now, if they say we are, but you know, there was a problem on that table, well, then they've got to handle it as an overring. I wouldn't give them access to um, access to voids and refunds and things like that. So, again, I'm doing a cash sale here. All right, and I'm bringing up, uh, again, let's just do our, uh, a wine pizza. Uh, no cold ring on that. Thank you very much. And I'm saying finish. All right, and you see the finish button instead of going back to the main menu it takes you to the finalization screen and you can't get out of there okay you have to put in the amount of money that they've given you now as I say an overring is typically something that you will handle at the end of the day to say I ring rang up the sale uh, it wasn't a real customer there was a boo-boo there was a mistake whatever you will decide how far you want to take this in many franchise companies they have a rule that you have to get the customer's telephone number and so forth otherwise the cashier will become responsible for the money you again will decide or you will go and back and say okay hang on let's go back at the transaction yes of course on the transaction report we can go and have a look and say yes I rang up this item look at the camera the camera says what you are saying is true and therefore I accept it um, and that's uh, that's it I hope that these couple of pointers helps you in terms of setting your system up easy and better make it more functional as I say we've done a couple of thousand restaurants I think there must be in the region about 6,000 restaurants pubs uh, fast food businesses are using four paws at the moment uh, this is in 2018 maybe the figure is higher I'm not sure um, but uh, you know in our experience uh, anything and everything that you want on the system is in there uh, you might come up and say but okay hang on we want to be able to do um, we want to be able to move tables or move items around and so on um, and we just simply don't allow it because in our experience again a waiter will take a small table move it to a big table uh, the big table pays for the bill they move it back to the small table the small table pays for the bill 
the business hasn't lost, the customer has lost, the, the, the big table customer has lost. If he picks it up, most likely he will, somebody in his office will go and pick it up and go look through it and say, sure, you know, that was a very expensive dinner for uh, the five or ten of us. Um, you will lose a customer. That customer will never go back to you. Okay. Um, and the question is, is, do you really think that's worthwhile? And it's not. So simply we don't allow it. Uh, sorry, while I'm talking, I'm just thinking about one item that we haven't done. Uh, and that is split tables. Um, let's do handle that quickly as well. All right, let me just go and take a table. Let's say table 55. And let's say there's four people at the table. As we all know, uh, again, we're sitting in restaurants every day. And we see people do all sorts of wonderful, funny things. So let me just go and ring up some items here. Let's say one wants a T-bone. And uh, yes, I know those items do not have the prep instructions on. Uh, but I just want to ring up some items. I don't know if I've got, yeah, I think you've got more than three items, four items. So that's good enough. Okay, so let's take that now. So I've got my table 55. And I, I'm just clicking on Waitron to put the table back. It was, obviously, you can put your floor layout in there is a video that handles the floor out quite well i think um all right so let's go and take this now and now i want to split the table up and you can move the table obviously it's just move it to a different place and say i want to move it over there uh, and the same applies for the f whatever but let's go and handle this all right and i want to say i want to split this table three times all right and now i've got my splits in the middle over there and i can say all right fine i want to put my 300 ramp goes to that table uh, to that person or that table then which represents one person uh, the Fanta can also goes to that table over there uh, the 500 gram I'll put on tab table 2 and as you can see the list becomes shorter on the left hand side and let's say the other 500 gram, sorry 500 gram goes over there all right and now there's a problem because I have some items left regional table so the one the original table had my 300 gram t-bone and uh, a large bit of three toppings okay so if i want to see what is on the other balls obviously if you click on the tables over there you can see what is wrong up on all of them and if you're done with that you just say done and it says the following items will stay on the same table as you did not split them you want to complete yes so all right so now i've got my uh, let's just move that in there all right so there's my original table and my all my other splits and if I go into any one of them, I can obviously go and print the bill or I can just go and cash out table. And that's the one item that comes up there. As I mentioned earlier, uh, remember our upsell that we did? There's my 300 gram with a Fanta um, at zero rand extra. All right. And that's uh, the story. Now, obviously, you can go and pay it out by credit card and so on. Um, there's also the facility where you can go and take a bill. Um, and you can go and say, I want to cash it out. But now, as you know, they want to pay in different ways, right? Okay, so they want to split half cash, half credit card, argument's sake. So I'm going to say split tender and cash. They will give you 100 rand, argument's sake. Um, and check, they don't give anything. Credit card, they will give you the balance. Let's say 124. All right, important that it actually balances. Okay, and then you can just say simply finishing. All right, and then on your cash up, your day end reports, uh, you will see that that 100 Rand went to cash and the 124 went on the credit card. Of course, you could have added tips and all the other bits and pieces on the system. Um, let's do the tips quickly. If I go cash a table, I could either go and do a percentage gratuity, which is the typical thing for me in any case, uh, add 15% on the bill, and you'll see it comes through as gratuity there. And now you can go and find out this cash or card or whatever the case may be. If it's a card, uh, you will say 200 Rand or whatever the case may be. Bear in mind that here it will show 33 Rand 25 as change um, because it's not adding that uh, to the, the bill. Okay. Um, and let's go and say you want to comp something. Some customer is not happy with a VIP or whatever the case may be. You can do that as well. And you might say, well, all right, fine, you know. Let me give him a, a 35 Rand uh, discount on that. So let's go and give him a value discount. And the reason for that is they are VIP customer. Uh, and you could put the name, person's name in there, etc., etc. And I'm just going to put in a 35 Rand. Oh, sorry. 
let's just change same VIP customer. <coughs> All right, and I'm putting uh, 35 Rand. Remember to put the, the money in there. And then you'll see your discount becomes 35 Rand uh, across there. And the total bill is 99.65. So I give you 100 Rand cash. And again, we're not prompting, we're printing automatic and so on. I think that sort of like covers all the main functionalities. Obviously, the rest is basically database inputs and so on. Uh, if there's anything else that I missed or you need to help on, uh, we'll make a video. The purpose of the videos, obviously, is so that thousands of customers can benefit from one video and we don't have to go through the same training multiple times. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for your time.